what are you doing in my spot, boys? Oh my gosh, these crazy dogs. Welcome to a very unique Wine Wednesday, Jam Fam. So, you know me, Rick, and obviously Andrea looks very different today. So this is... Oh, that's funny. <laughs> this is Will. Is mine? Uh, AKA, yeah, sure. Is it, no, I'm, who else is, would that be? I'm just saying, <laughs> I'm not telling. You want to pick up the wrong glass. But AKA Superset Ted. And um, if you don't know any of his backstory, you're going to learn today. We're going to be talking again about loss. We're going to be talking again about change. And it's such a devastating topic that we could literally probably just talk every week on this and still be effective. But what's cool about Superset Ted's background is, is that he used to be a professional rapper. He used to rap with Ludacris, he used to be on stage, and he's got a very interesting story about his development through loss and change from what we call being on top of Olympus and then having it all taken away. So, mm. Will, if you can give me a little bit of your story, like, go ahead and let people know who you are, because I could tell it only half as good as the person who's lived it. Well, I'm still in the process of discovery, and uh, thank you for having me, man. Well, uh, cheers. Cheers dope. on you. Now, we are we are drinking water because I'm fighting a head cold and he doesn't drink alcohol anymore. Yeah. <laughs> so, so that's a win. Yeah, party hard in the music industry. Uh, I ended up getting my record deal when I was uh, 17 years of age. Uh, I was performing. It only took me two years to get my recording contract. I had a solid team from uh, the south side of Chicago and uh, we performed everywhere in Chicago, you know. And I ended up meeting one person who knew another person who uh, flew our CD out to mm -hmm. uh, Ludacris and he heard the record and flew us out to his home about a week later. Really? After, yeah, after he, uh, <laughs> after he heard the, uh, the CD. So we, uh, we didn't believe it at first. You know, we're sitting down in IHOP and we get a call from our managers to meet there and they're basically saying uh, Ludacris want to fly y'all out to his home. That's crazy. Kick it with y'all personally. That's crazy. And we didn't believe it. And so we're talking to a guy, and he's like, there's going to be some plane tickets in your email tomorrow. So we're like, bullshit, yep. whatever. You know, we heard the story a thousand times. But we get home, we see the plane tickets in our email for Atlanta, Georgia. And me and my boy, we call each other, you see that shit? I'm like, yeah, I see it too. We might be going <laughs> to Atlanta to meet this man for real. So we, uh, we got on the plane, we got there, we met a guy uh, who was a friend of Chris. We drive him for about an hour. We get to these big old gates. You know, I'm 17 years old, you know, from Chicago, can't believe it. And uh, we hear his voice through the intercom, boop, 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 never forget it. Uh, Chris, I got the boys with me, all right, let him through. And me and my boy like, what the fuck, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And we going down this big driveway, see a big pond, big disturbing the peace emblem, super big mansion, and it was little Chris' house, you know? So <laughs> me and my boy was there. We go in, uh, we go in through the back, and Ludacris is standing in his own kitchen. His own kitchen. He's standing in his own kitchen. That makes sense. <laughs> he's in his own kitchen, and he'd be standing here. Yeah. <laughs> and he's fixing the sandwich. And after that, you know, he he introduces himself. We introduce ourselves. We go back to the studio. We make a lot of friends there, and uh, that was the beginning process. You know, uh, getting there and meeting everybody and developing a relationship and uh, being ran the game of how the uh, music industry is going to go. So that was basically the first part of uh, meeting Chris. So then, how far did it go up when you started hitting like the top? Like, what was that like? When you guys were at the top of your man, game, a like? whole bunch of wild shit. Uh, man, uh, what really got us, I guess, um, to another level, what was starting to separate us from uh, the, where we were, is uh, we performed for L.A. Reid. That's when it got serious. So L.A. Reid is the guy who was the president of Dev Jam. Mm -hmm. Um, back in the early 2000s, and he's the guy who found Outkast, TLC, Usher, and uh, a, he couple, had a, a couple names people would right, have right, some of the biggest <laughs> names, right. and um, he was the co-owner of LaFace Records okay. with Babyface. So when we performed with uh, perform, when we performed for LA Reid in his office, uh, we ended up getting a record deal with. Uh, with Def Jam. So that's when we, after that, we started going on tour, had the tour buses, was going to the celebrity pool parties, and we were recording our, al our album, Never To Be Heard. Never To Be Heard. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Never To Be Heard, man. But that's when things started hitting the next level and we got a chance to see the 
the other side of the music industry, you know, and uh, it was it was great, you know, and uh, the thing that happened, I guess, well, I guess we'll get to that in a moment, was my team changed. Mm -hmm. So with the team change, the mentality behind the team changed as well. So what were some of the changes that were happening that you noticed? Well, me and my partner, we came up with a, a rags to riches mentality. So we were always hungry. Like like a lottery winner almost in this case. It's almost like you guys won the lottery too fast or what do you mean? Like you guys were still trying to fight for different things? What do you mean? It's, it's tough to say. In a, way, in a sense you can say that because that was our first big break. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I, and I'll be honest about it. So I was dealing with the snakes of the industry mm -hmm. and uh, I had a choice to either step away for this from this once in a lifetime opportunity mm -hmm. or take it but if I took it it will come with consequences like removing the team that got me there in the beginning mm -hmm. and being that young is a choice that I regret that I made but it happened for a reason to show me the reality of the world and when I was when you're in that type of field, specifically the music business, you need people around you that you can trust. You need people around you, people around you that love you and care about your well-being on all levels. You just can't have people around you looking at you like a bag of money because it's like Don King and Mike Tyson. They'll tell you absolutely everything you need to hear. When he when Custom Model died, Mike died with Custom Model. The legend died with Custom Model because he didn't have that that passion and that love and that sincerity and that that honest critique and where you know it's not damaging your performance level but it's building you up so when I removed my team of uh, the people that got me there I started uh, working with certain people who didn't have the same mentality they were already in the music industry and they had no idea on how to make a group bigger so they were already used to a certain lifestyle you know and I, I, I assume that they came up the same way I came up but in actuality Ludacris was grabbing these people because he had the, the money to grab these people right off the street and teach them what they needed to know so they didn't have to go through the same school that I went through, you know. And I and I came from really performing in the neighborhood, turning everything into a show. Every every Everything was an opportunity for us when we first started. And if it wasn't an opportunity, we learned how to create it. We developed what they call in the music industry a switch. At any given moment, you have to cut it on and you have to be 100% in doing it. It doesn't matter if it's one person there or if it's 10 people there or if it's 100 people there. You have to come with that energy. I think a lot of people can relate to that one. I think a lot of people have those switches for work too. You wake up and be like, I don't really want to do this. And then you Committed. just get there and you're like, okay, got to be on. I'm yeah. do it. Like, yeah. And it's a, it's a skill. I think that people sometimes um, think that everybody just has this natural talent, but some of these things that we have to develop are skills and yeah. there's a lot of choices, a lot of loss that happened in that. So when you left the group, that's a massive change. You went on to do your own thing with new people who didn't have anything to look out for you for, mm -hmm. except for their own self-interest. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's a lot of loss there. You didn't yeah. have, I bet, how did the team respond to that? Hey, you know, this is the, the funny part. I lost that situation because I was scared of losing that situation. That is truth. I've been encountering a lot of that with people. Mm -hmm. Like people have something that they're afraid to lose and they almost destroy it because they're afraid of it yep. happening to them yep. so they make it happen. Yep. Well, it's almost, and here's the thing that we've talked about before. We talked about like the, the what you focus on is what you find. We talked about um, like the secret and the things that your law of attraction, the things that you focus on, what you're looking like to find, you will find it. And if you're always thinking about, I don't want to lose this, I'm going to lose this, this mm -hmm. is going to happen, I'm, this is going to happen, what if this happens, oh my God. You'll naturally move yourself towards whether it's a positive or a negative thing. Yeah. And in this case, you were so focused yeah. on that thing that that thing manifested itself. It, it happened. Did. It did. And that's that's a, there's a life lesson in that. Like this stuff, what you're focusing on is what you're going to find. That's mm -hmm. a guarantee. If you're thinking about, oh man, our divorce. I don't want to get a divorce. I'm worried about my divorce. I don't want to have a divorce. Yeah. We don't want to get divorced. You're still focused on divorce. No matter what sentences you're saying, there's always talking about that. And then when inevitably your relationship starts falling apart or your dynamic starts falling apart, it's because you're not focused on 
like making it stronger, yep. you're focusing on losing it. Yeah. And you'll naturally subconsciously do things to lose it and then wonder what happened. That's exactly what happened. And that's what happened with the group. Like you started going, oh man, I don't want to lose this. I can't lose this. I have it. I don't want to lose it. I don't want to lose it. But you're still focusing on losing it. Yep. So then what happened? So now, now you're in this whole new scenario. Okay, so uh, I'll uh, backtrack and I tell you some of the things that was going on, so I can tell you some of the how to how I associated those thoughts with losing what I had. I became worried about uh, what everybody else was thinking. I became worried about uh, my representation, and uh, I became worried about how to hold things together and make everybody else happy. Mm -hmm. And in that process. It, uh, I guess you could say, I wasn't man enough, you know, to then at the time, the way I was thinking back then, I wasn't man enough to voice my opinion about certain things because I was so scared and I didn't even realize I'm part of the main reason why we're all here today. Yes. You know, so I put my power into everybody else, you know, and I forgot my own power that, you know what, this is my operation. Why the hell am I asking this person for this? Or why the hell am I asking that person for that when I know what I should be doing, you know? But at the time, uh, I, I was thinking like that. You lose you know? yourself in doing everything for others. Yeah, that's what was going on completely. Yeah. So um, we get on the phone call. This is what, uh, fast forward through a, through a lot of a lot of bullshit happened. The fast forward through a lot of it. We get on the phone call with uh, Ludacris. So, we shot ourselves in the foot. So we were going to go to Convict Music with Akon. So we were meeting with his people and everything. And, uh, we called Chris. You know, we, uh, this is not working out, X, Y, and Z. But the whole time, I'm knowing that this is not the right move. Yeah. But because I wanted to make everybody else happy, I'm going along with what, with what everybody else is saying, mm -hmm. with what everybody else is doing. I'm, and I'm knowing this is not the right thing to do. So. We call Chris, we say, you know, we uh, we tired of not getting the proper treatment and all, all of this uh, bull crap. It was things that my manager was telling us because what he wanted to see, you know, because of his own personal situation. And that's certain things that, those are, those are the type of things that you have to be, you know, aware of. aware of, you know. What are people's motives that are around you, you know, because you really can't trust everybody but you have to be vigilant of the people that you're working with and the type of people that you're around. We weren't. We had one thing in mind and we weren't, I guess, worried or concerned about the other areas of the business. And um, I was just trying to do it to make my uh, my group happy, to keep the group together, to keep everything together. We get on the call with them. We, uh, we let them know how we felt. You know, everything turned into a big argument and we were released out of our contract. We were thinking that we were going to go to convict music, music, but everything declined. Nothing went through. So now we were free agents. And over time, the group stopped meeting up. The phone call stopped between the management and the artists, and mm -hmm. we all split it our own personal ways in life. And that was basically the end of uh, being in the music industry. It so, happened like this. Yep. One choice. Yep. One choice. Yep. It's so crazy how fast these things happen, and like. It's really difficult when you're in those situations where you're chasing your dreams, chasing your dreams, and all of your things are there, and then something derails you, something throws you off, and you felt like you were on a specific path, and then something happens, and yeah. it's different for all of us. We all have different lives, you know. For you, it may have been that moment where you chose to not go with people who were loyal, or it felt like it wasn't at the time what you wanted and I think we've had those with relationships or maybe an unexpected pregnancy or a failed relationship like life will happen like where you gotta take care of the kids or someone gets sick you know mm -hmm. a parent gets sick things will happen so quickly to knock you off your game yeah and it's easy to say like step it up get back up again it's easy just do it again like it's, it's easy to say things but it's not easy to do these things mm -hmm. and so sometimes those all the dedication and hard work and years, because think about it, how many years were you building yourself up until this moment even happened? Probably from uh, age uh, 15 to about uh, 
think I walked away when I was 20 to 23. Right, so you got yeah. almost a decade into mm-hmm. this. Like you're putting a, a whole bunch in this, yeah, like seven, eight years mm-hmm. before it's like something just happened. Like, so we, we don't account for seven and eight years of dedicated practice on anything. Yeah. And this was day in, day out, eat, sleep, shit, two days awake in a studio. This is show after show after show after show, plane after plane, multiple plays a week. This is meeting after meeting. This is photo shoot after photo shoot. This is a nonstop thing that you're doing and it feels like you're getting nowhere. But uh, at the same time, people up the outside people are recognizing like the progress that you're making but it doesn't happen overnight, you know? But this is the sacrifice that comes with the game. And it's a lot of people in the entertainment business that do 15 years on recognizing and finally they get it together, you know? And, and have they, their big break, you know? So it's one thing that you do have to be consistent about. And one thing that affected us was taking for granted, you know, the situation that we had. Cause it was like a lottery kind of ticket, like, 17, I'm on a tour bus, I'm at this party, you know, I'm performing for 10,000 people, but I'm forgetting these are not my fans. I'm being brought in the middle of a showcase by this mainstream artist, and I'm thinking this is my wife, you know, and I was putting in the work, but I still not have, I don't even have a number one hit record out yet, you know, so being that young and that impressionable and having a lot of things kind of handed to me, you know, after a little struggle, but I did have some things handed to me, it can make you forget how to take advantage of what's right in front of your face. Right. As well. And there's complacency all over the place. Right. It's easy when we get to, like, when we hit a certain goal, it's easy for us to to just go, like, oh, man. Yeah, I got you. You're out of water? Yeah, well, it's ice. Oh, it's milk. It's so good. It's ice so water. Good. It's so good. Appreciate you. But I think that a lot of us in this one can relate. And I think that I want to say thank you for sharing the story with people because a lot of people may not even know what that is. You know, when you hear these these situations of people who are, you know, one hit wonders or people who had it all and then lost it. Or, you know, I think lottery winner is the easiest way to say what that is. And say like somebody who had so much so fast, all of a sudden, bam, everything is different. Everything is totally changed. Yep. But you weren't equipped or you weren't ready yet to be able to handle all of this and it, the foundation falls apart. Easily and quickly. And we've had that. I tell you, like, you know, let us know something that you guys can relate to. Say, I've had a dynamic or I've had a relationship or a marriage failed or you know, some, a work situation, something that was really good but I didn't know it at the time. You know? And it sucked because these moments cause so much pain because the amount of loss that you have in those moments is astronomical. Mm-hmm. So how much loss... Did you feel when you felt extra that you were gone from that industry? Like you weren't in it, the way it was all Ooh, just there, that was and then tough. it was gone. That was tough. No phone calls, no messages, nobody's calling in. Hey, Andrea, welcome on, girl. People of Earth. <laughs> Let us know if you and Denise can jump on because we are ready whenever you are ready. So let us know. But what did it feel like when that was like there, and then like within like a flash, it was gone? Well... As you can see, I've tattooed my entire face out of uh, a cry for help. Um, it felt like my, my identity was gone completely. And a part of my tattoo on my face was trying to figure out, first it was a, it was a cry for help because now I'm back in regular society. Mm-hmm. I've been out of regular society for damn near eight years and I don't know how to cope with hat, living in one spot and uh, getting a job, you mm-hmm. know? so. That was pretty tough for me to deal with and just being quote unquote normal. There's nothing wrong with being normal. It was just that I live such an extreme life that I don't know what to do now. So um, it, it was, I, I had to go to therapy for a little while, you know, to, to get back in the balance and to get my, uh, my thought process back right because I didn't even know what I was going through at the time okay. because nobody could really relate to my specific situation. And I always tell people, like, I feel like the goddamn millionaire who lost all his money blew his brains out, but I lived through it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> right. I feel like I lived through it because I did experience a million, a million dollar lifestyle. I was exposed to a lot of things that 90, 97% of the people on earth will never see. It's, it's probably 99.8%. True. True. <laughs> true. true. Very true. But the process of healing began, um, I guess, seeking for help. You know, and the the real process became when I, uh, healing started, when I had to realize, like, my life is not over. Mm -hmm. 
like why am I letting my life be over because of a situation that I know how to get to can come back if I work that situation again more effectively. And then I had to step back and start thinking like, I'm equipped to come back because I've suffered great pain. I know the wisdom of everything that I did wrong now and I know how to do everything absolutely right. So when I, it was a snowball effect when I started thinking like that and I started rebuilding myself in ways that made me mentally tougher, you know, and uh, I guess you could say uh, more balanced and more humble. I realized everything that I did wrong. I realized the person that I was back then and I made a choice. Everything is a choice. Everything hey, is hey, a hey, hey, it's a good book. It's a good book he by has, my man. He has read the yes, book. He yes, everything it. is a choice. And um, I had a choice to rebuild myself in a way that I knew I should be, you know. And um, I, was, I replayed back a lot of those situations and I replayed back what I should have done. So now there's no excuse in the future for when them opportunities present themselves back to me, how I should conduct you know myself and so uh, I began uh, just just rethinking everything reaching back out and just building myself back better and better but I stopped telling myself that I lost something I had to stop telling myself that it was my life was over because I was believing that you know by me constantly telling myself that and I was killing myself emotionally you know yeah. instead of saying hey I still got all these limbs I still got my brain power and I can still do it. It's just the adversity. And once I uh, accepted adversity and hardship and I and I really took that to heart, I understood that this may be the pathway to peace. I may have to go through these things in business to become better at it, you know, so. Yeah, and uh, if you're focusing on that loss all the time, like the more you focus on the loss, the more lost you feel because yep. you're missing something key that we need in our lives and that's purpose. You're missing the thing you're supposed to be doing and the more you focus on the thing you don't have, the more you are not doing the thing that you should be doing. And consistently, everybody's got a lion inside of them. Everybody's got something inside of you that's, that's screaming to do a thing that you're meant to do. But society and life and work and responsibility it's and tough. all the things come up that sidetrack you from focusing on what is your strength? What are you supposed to do? And I've had conversations with client after client after person who's working with me who are like, I don't know what my strength is. I don't know what my purpose is. I have no idea. I go to work, I help somebody else build their dream. I deal with the drama somebody else doesn't want to deal with. And then I go home and I just try and rest up so I can redo it again the next day. I don't Ooh, remember what wait. I'm supposed to be doing. I don't know what my purpose is. And if you're focusing on, I had a thing I was doing and now I can't do that anymore the way I used to do it, what am I, who am I? Mm. And you lose the key thing, the most essential thing that I keep finding in everybody, and I think you and I have both been struggling through that same exact thing, which is one word that it keeps coming back to, and it's belief. If you stop believing in yourself, everything starts to fall apart. If you lose certainty that you are meant to do a thing, all of your potential stops working. Mm -hmm. All the things you're meant to do and designed to do don't work because the action you put into it is so small. Because mm -hmm. you don't believe in it. You just, you dabble, you try. Let me go ahead and give it a shot again. You put this much potential into it. And your actions are so small. And then what results do you get? If you put a little bit of action and you just dabble and try, what do you think the results are? They barely show up on the scale. And so then what does that do to you believing in yourself? It, uh, it destroys that belief. It hurts. It causes more hurt. It reinforces that you're not good. Mm -hmm. It reinforces that you shouldn't believe in yourself. It creates so much self-doubt yeah. that everything inside of you screams that you're not good enough. You're a failure. I'm not, I can't, I, I can't do this. What, what am I even wasting my time for? What's the mm -hmm. point? And think of all the negative thoughts that have weighed you down. From just losing that one word, you believe in yourself. You start listening to the noise, the noise all around us. There's so many people who have opinions. An opinion that wants to stop you from being what you are meant to be because you're not doing what they think you should be doing or what they themselves do. Yep. But that's not what you're supposed to be doing. Your design is different. You're supposed to be doing something different. But we never identify why. What is our why? What are we supposed to be doing? What's our purpose? 
And then what does that loss feel like on a daily basis? What does it feel like it feels when you're like in crap. depression? <laughs> it feels like crap. Because every day, I don't know if it's a grand design, God, or your subconscious, but whatever it is, it's going to always tell you you're supposed to be doing something. And you specifically know that you're not doing it. Yes. And you know deep down that you're jeopardizing yourself because of fear of probably succeeding. And I've dealt with that for a long time. Like, what if I do succeed? What if it works? What if it works? Oh my God. What if I follow through? What if it works? Then I get up to the top again? Yep. And then it's all taken away again. Yep. That's, uh, I had to deal with those thoughts as well. But then I came back and I said, you know what? It don't fucking matter. <laughs> it, it doesn't. I made it to the top again. I've done something that helps give me more strength day to day. I'm focused on something that is is making me feel better regardless of a future circumstance. And one thing that I never do anymore, I never let my mind take control of my brain and make me worry about the future because God knows what can happen tomorrow. So I stay in the present and I work on the things that I can work on now. Whatever comes tomorrow will be a benefit, but I see now failure is always there's an underlying opportunity under failure for you to learn something else so that's the way i started to look i learned how to learn Mm -hmm. better about what i was going through and uh i learned how to learn to be more effective in certain ways and to build my character and but to deal with that depression uh I, i i truly believe that it all falls back into the way that you're talking about what you're going through belief again mm-hmm. with the, t- the things that you tend to say to yourself you tend to believe them whether it's they're good or shitty it is absolute yeah the noise you make in your head is the loudest sound you hear whether it be positive or negative whether you cultivate confidence or you cultivate how much you're worthless yeah whatever you're saying <laughs> is the truth you're, no, you're right. Your, your brain will tell you you're a piece of shit, and you'll say, I am. I am. It must, <laughs> must be true because you said it so many times. Damn. It must be true. Yeah. But you don't catch yourself in those <laughs> moments. It's happened. And, and and you think about it. I talk to people all the time, and, and like, guys, it happens to us. But women, you guys you guys know more than we do. Like, that inner voice, that, mm. uh, that highly critical thing inside of you that compares you to everybody and makes mm. you feel like you're not pretty enough or skinny enough or good enough or all those things good like enough ladies like it's it's only as much as you believe it is if there's a thing you want there are steps it takes to do that but it has nothing to do with anybody else with what they have or what they look like or what they're doing what you're meant to do has nothing to do with anybody else but we get caught up in comparisons. We get caught up in our own self beat down in the things I've heard people say, how they're ugly and fat and they're not pretty, like these, these weird subconscious things that gnaw at our soul and take away our potential, take away our action, take mm. away all of the results we're supposed to be having because we start going into this downward spiral. And I think that one thing we've talked about and I know that you can relate to is you start getting into addictive properties. You start getting into something to replace the pain. You start trying to solve the the hurt by filling it with something that does make you feel good, even if it's only for a moment. It may cause so much damage later, but you you lean towards smoking or drinking or eating. You know, I think that everybody can relate to whether it be emotional eating or something that just masks the pain. It could be uh, dating habitually and being with people who aren't really looking out for your self-interest where you're using them and they're using you. We've seen so many different versions of things that cause pain. And recognizing it's, it's it tough. is the first step. It's really difficult. This is why we take inventory as our first thing in, in our mindset training. What's the situation? What is it? It could be good or bad. It's not a judgment. It's not for anybody else to say whether it's good or bad. It's what is it? What do you have now? What are you doing to yourself? And when you take a minute and you catch, oh crap, I'm doing this thing. That's the first step in order to be able to go, well, is that what I want? Right. One thing I love Andrea saying is all of your choices lead you down into lifestyles. Hey, you know? girl. And so she's always talking about which life do you want? 
and we talk about everything as a choice all the time. So when it gets into, well, if I choose to emotionally eat, if I choose to not work out, if I choose to not take care of myself and always put everyone else first, what's the result look like? You know, right. and you see people overweight and unhealthy and self-conscious right. and, and have so much self-doubt and beat themselves down and they start destroying the relationships around them because they're so unhappy and have so much hurt inside of themselves. Mm -hmm. Or do you take the moment to say, I'm taking control back and I will eat responsibly. I'm going to take care of myself at least 20 to 30 minutes a day. I'm going to be accountable for my things that I do. And I'm going to be there for people as powerfully as I possibly can because I take care of me. Start small. And then it's, it's just small choices that make these two lifestyles dramatically different. 20 minutes a day of taking care of yourself in order to take care of the people you love makes a massive difference over time. Mm -hmm. And I see the excuses all the time and they're always there and it causes- They'll always be there. So much, so much loss happens and the changes are happening from our choices. Choice, choices bring changes and change brings choices. It inspires both to happen. When you make a decision, a new set of options show up from that decision. Do I date this person? Do I not date this person? Do I stay or do I go? And each decision opens up a new set of choices. If I go, then I can get my own place or I can move in with my parents. You know, if I go, then that means I could date somebody new or I can stay single. Like a whole new set of options open. If I stay, that means I'll be miserable, but I can try and fix them. You know, if I stay, I know it's gonna cause me hurt, you know, but if I go, it could be double, you know, like, there's so many things that we rattle our brain with, with all the options yeah. that uh, we honestly, and I think we forget, we forget by circumstance that we're in control. Mm -hmm. And I think something with your story and something that I see with other people's stories, who do you blame for the situation going the way that it went? Me, uh, at first, I blamed everybody. Blamed everybody. It's all, it's happened to everybody. me. everybody. Yeah, I blame everyone and every, I blame Ludacris. I blame, and he was the one who gave me the opportunity. I blame him, I blame my partner, I blame my managers. But at the end of the day, it was my not choosing to make the right choices and to say the right things when I looked in the mirror and I came to grips with everything I've done in the past and I, I became real with myself. Mm -hmm. And I became honestly real in a ruthless way that's when the truth came there's nobody to blame for my life except myself because i'm choosing to involve if i never would have chose to get into this area of my life it never would have happened yeah but i chose to hop in this field mm -hmm. whatever happened with coming in this with being in this field it was my fault because I chose to be in that field. And then you, you know? chose the actions in it. And I chose not to educate myself while I was going through the process. I chose not to to do this. I chose to do that instead. I chose to, I, it was all my choices at the end of the day. Right. So at the end of the day, I, I, when I looked my face, uh, myself in the mirror, it was really, it was all me. It was all my doing and undoing. But the other side of it was uh, when you come back, from I guess that journey that it takes you on and that's what I love about the journey you know I, I I never get obsessed about being at a certain destination anymore I love the process of the journey the continuous work the continuous rebuilding the continuous learning I got a chance to say hold up I can reflect on the situation and make the situation better now so now I study artist development coaching and teaching other kids how to do what not and what not to do what I did and learn from my mistakes yes. you know cheers, so they because they're gonna go to through the that. same thing they're gonna go to through the cheers exact to same things mm. and uh, I'm out bro oh, I got you. got you but they're gonna go through the exact same things and I started working on a book called to be heard at first it was gonna be never to be heard and that's a subconscious thing like I'm that. never going to be heard let me take out the never, call it to be heard. Mm -hmm. Tell everybody the exact steps I took getting into the music industry, what I did to succeed to get there, where I failed at, and the tips and tricks that I learned along the way to learn how to deal and operate with certain people in every other situation. And while I'm working on that, 
I can still come back with my music. And then I was such in a negative place that I forgot that I even had friends in the music industry still. Yep. I'm still friends with everybody in the music industry still. But because I was telling myself that it's over, I lost it. I distanced myself away from everybody. You created the problem because yep. you were focused on that. Yep. So just to recap that, because what you just said was crazy powerful. I don't know if you guys have caught how strong that was. You were in a place of blame, but by taking accountability and saying, this was me, not them. They didn't do it to me. Yep. I did this. Did that empower you or did that make you feel weaker? At first, I felt weak. Until you recognize until I recognize the power in being real with myself and saying that I did this. So now I can take I can take control for everything else that I do. And Whether I just, it's a bad situation, good situation, I, I know how to turn everything better now because it's in my control. When you realize it and you realize no one's driving your life, you have your hands on the steering wheel. It gives you your power back, and that's what we talk about all the time. Cheers. Cheers on that. Uh, yeah. And so taking accountability, I just did a video yesterday, and that was the training, saying what if everything was your fault? What if it was all your fault? Does that make you feel sad, or does that make you feel like I'm, I can do something about it? Would you really want everybody else to change in order to make your life feel better, or would you rather be the one who has to make the decisions Hell to make no. it happen? Do you yeah, want yeah. control or do you want somebody else to be the one who has to wake up so yeah. you can be happy? I think that's another thing that people have to recognize and they will continuously beat themselves up about the world not being the way that they think it should be for them. And when people constantly go into the world thinking that, oh, why did this person or yeah. this person, it does not work like that. The right. thing is, is having that resilience and having that armor inside of you to know how to operate in certain situations like that, you yes. know? That's where the true peace comes from. That's where the understanding comes from. It's knowing how to take uh, the adversity and transmute it into the way that you feel it should be. And then instead of reacting, you respond to it. Yeah. You respond from a better place. You know? Oh yeah. Yes. Also one of the chapters in my book, just saying, responding and reacting. We have it we talk about. It. I appreciate that you read that thing. Oh, yeah. And so the cool thing about this, and this is the thing that I know a lot of people have been working through, is their pain and their hurt Ooh. and all of their stuff that yeah. they have. There's choices there that it's either that negative thing is the thing that holds you down or that negative thing becomes your opportunity yeah. to teach and make things better. And so from your, what you would at one point call the tragedy has now evolved into your opportunity because what you went through is what other people will inevitably go through yes. if they don't know what you know. Yes. And so being able to take your pain and turning it into progress is one of the choices. Anybody who's been through emotional trauma or been through pain or been taken advantage of or been hurt now has experience that you can prevent other people from living the negativity in that way. It makes you so much stronger by recognizing this is up to me. I did this, I'm the one who's gonna get me out of this. Yeah. When we stop blaming our upbringing, when we stop blaming what others should have done, you forget that the hard things you go through make you harder. Mm -hmm. But you choose whether you're this a warrior. Oh, I wanna hear it. <laughs> or, or, or you said, I forgot what you just said, but if they didn't do that to me, mm -hmm. that's another one Yeah. that, uh, that affected me negatively you how know? many of you guys can relate to well they didn't do that to me I would yeah I would I this would not I wouldn't have done X Y and Z mm -hmm. or this situation would have been totally different but it was the truth of the matter was how I chose to let it affect me once they did it because I can't expect everybody else to be the way that I think everybody else should be you yeah know? and that helped me it's it's a huge lesson that is a huge lesson and I, I, I encourage you guys, I put my video up, I accidentally made it public, and I'm just leaving it. It wasn't supposed to be, but I saw when I loaded on YouTube at the Just My Other Day page, I accidentally left it public. And so go ahead and watch last night's training. I didn't put the powerful stuff on, which was the stuff from the conversations that were directly for the people on there. Those are private, and if you're in the, in the mindset training, you're a part of that. But the lesson itself, 
was a lot on this stuff. It was about being able to recognize that the fear that you have in facing your own choices holds you back and puts you in a prison. It's everyone else did this to me. Everyone else is the reason why I'm in this position. Everyone else has done this. But it's a series of decisions to allow people to do the things that they're doing that puts you in this position. And it's, it's not victim blaming. There's decisions that had to happen for all circumstances to exist. And a lot of times being naive or not understanding it or just not knowing enough about the topic puts us in positions that later we're like, oh God, I wish I would have learned that lesson differently. Mm-hmm. Like sometimes life will just punch you right in the face. Yeah, super tough. And it does, and it's small decisions and small choices that we can't have the foresight to know what's gonna happen. So that's why I say you can't control life, but you can control how you choose to handle it. Which is why I say, which skills should you be developing? Awareness, Mm -hmm. you should be developing, how do I handle this with my best ability? What's my power, what's my strength? How do I approach this? It makes it so you're borderline bulletproof against some of the pain that the world tries to throw at you. And some of it catches you off guard. You're like, whoa, what the, I wasn't ready for this. But then you go into your skill set that you have of awareness, like, okay, well, what is it? What are some of my options? How can I move forward? Like, you, if you look at it that way instead of, well, I guess I'm screwed. I guess that's life. I guess I'll just go and do my thing that, that makes me forget about it. I'll get drunk or I'll go eat or I'll, you know, I'll just, uh, I'll take some medication or I'll, you know, do drugs. I'll do something that makes me forget. I need to not face my demons. Mm-hmm. But not facing your demons becomes your identity. Yeah. I think that people forget that. Not facing what you have to fight is what you become. And yeah, demons can kill you. They can, they, they sure can paralyze you, they can stunt you, they can poison you, they can hurt you in every way. And it's only because we don't fight them. We create them. I think that's the thing that we forget. Yeah. is the thing will happen and our defense mechanism was to create a monster that represents what happened mm-hmm. and instead of fighting it and killing it we allow it to live and fester yeah it sits and, and we feed destroy it. all we feed it we feed the shit out of it we feed it more than anything <laughs> that's the thing that we give the most energy to you know you hear matthew mcconaughey said like you got two wolves in you you got the wolf that wants you to be successful and you got the wolf that is, is just negative and wants you to fail and they're both hungry, mm. and they both want to eat. So who are you feeding? Mm. Which one are you, are you making the strongest? Which one are you giving the most food to? Mm. And, and that's the tough thing, is to recognize, I'm feeding my negative monster. I'm feeding the demon inside me. I'm giving that all of the attention, and you're starving the part of you that believes in yourself. The one thing that helps keeps me focused on feeding the, the proper wolf is uh, developing a, a system for me to live by every single day. Probably fall off the system once or twice a week, but I know if I stick with this certain system that I have, this daily routine, this morning routine, and this night routine, that's pushing me along further with my goals because you can constantly be moving, but you won't be making any progress, you know, if, if, you, if you're just moving. So I, I, I will switch my routine every couple of weeks, just you know, just to make things different. But I follow a strict routine daily and nightly to help keep, like, keep me focused. Because if I don't have it, have one, I can fall back into all the negativity, to all the wrong way of living, just being idle. And I think that's a big thing that uh, that goes with uh, not succeeding and not understanding what you're going through. If not understanding what you're going through is not a main goal, you will never understand what you're going through. You know, it has to be the number one thing that's on your list. It How seems do I so work my simple. way out of this shit storm? It seems so simple. Mm-hmm. How easy is that? To? To be able to go like, here's my situation, let's change it. Uh, <laughs> man, it's, it's not that simple. It is it's, so hard to do this. It's not that simple. <laughs> it is so difficult. But when it happens, you realize, shit, it is simple. It, it, it's funny. Once it's a you, paradox. Once you figure it out, you're like, oh. You right. know, it's kind of like doing a math problem. Right. You're like, I'm scratching my head on this math. And you're like, no, no, carry the two. And you're like, if right. you carry the two, the answer's 47. And you're uh, like, oh, yeah. I just wasn't carrying the I see two. what you mean, brother. It was it was <laughs> like that, though. It, 
it was very simple when I said, hold, this is what, this is what I need to do. Mm -hmm. But I made it hard yep. because I was running away <laughs> from my demons the entire time. So I had to suffer way longer than I even needed to suffer. You know what I'm yes. saying? When I could have just said, oh, X, Y, Z, work on that, do the math problem, carry the two, bam, I'm out of there. Carry the two. That's carry the goddamn two. two. <laughs> carry the damn two. That's all I had to do, man. Carry Talk. the two. Really? <laughs> carry the two. That's dope. <laughs> Carried the two, yeah. I'm sorry. <laughs> After I carried the two, you know, the problem begins to, you know, get better. You know, the equation becomes mm -hmm. to get better. But I believe putting yourself on that type of routine, on, on some type of system, and into into becoming. And one thing that um, I I know that you guys talk about a lot, you and Andrea, is vulnerability. Yeah. You know, and you you do have to be vulnerable when it comes to this. You do have to surround yourselves with other eagles when it comes to this. Um, mm -hmm. But one thing that I think makes people scared of succeeding is the fear of not being the most best of whatever it is they're trying to do, and they won't even work on being the most okayest. Yeah, <laughs> you know what or I'm even saying? even mediocre. Like yeah, you know what I'm saying. It's a pure fail. It's like I okay. said, okayest on purpose. <laughs> you're very literate. Your it. English is so terrible. Yeah, no, but uh, no, I think that's a very good point, and I got into that one day. Is why is not trying at all better than failing. Mm -hmm. Like it's a guarantee lose. Like mm -hmm. like it's better to play and then not win than it is to never play and never have anything. You don't have any. Mm -hmm. If you shoot at nothing, you'll hit it every time. It's mm -hmm. zigzag. If if you're aiming for nothing, that's what you're going to find. Mm -hmm. And I think that's a it's a really interesting thing that we say I'm going to fail at that, so I won't even try. Yeah. Well, what skills do you develop? What lessons do you learn? What things do you grow stronger through if you never have any experience? No, and you're recognizing that life keeps getting worse over time when you're not doing it. When you're not doing what you're supposed to do, and that's what I was experience, experiencing when I was uh, refusing to uh, take my role in the music industry where I knew I was supposed to be. It's like things just kept getting worse and worse over the years because I'm internally suffering by not taking that shot when I know, quote, let's say basketball is my thing. Mm -hmm. I'm just holding the ball on the court and every time, 24 seconds, the buzz is going off. I didn't do a goddamn thing not knowing whether I would take a shot or not. And I'm knowing deep down, like, if I would have did this today or if I could have did this today, that stuff sticks with you when you have a, a purpose Yeah. and when you're on a journey. So it's better to do something geared towards that than just sit there and wait because one thing that I know with a lot of successful people is they value time and you're not valuing your time on this planet when you when you just laying around you know yeah. when you're just being lazy about certain situations and we're not saying that you I'm personally not saying that you have to give every single second of every single day to but committing some time because like you was talking about earlier we could commit to our jobs we could commit to everybody else but we're scared to commit to ourselves. And mm -hmm. I, I don't know why that is, but that's crazy. We can commit to something that we hate, but we can't commit to trying to do something that we love. Yeah. Trying to do something that we love. Yeah, it's it's always sitting right in front of us too. It's, it's the elephant in the room you have to walk around. Am I going to go after my goals? Mm -hmm. Am I gonna go after my dreams? Mm -hmm. And it seems like everybody's trying to add weight on and it is a skill, it's a direct skill to recognize what it is that's trying to hold you down, you know? Mm -hmm. And I had a conversation this morning, you know, even with, with uh, one of the people from the group, and, and everyone says that they're busy. And I believe we believe that, I mm -hmm. believe it. We, we, we say things that we don't believe people will challenge. Mm -hmm. I gotta take care of my kids, I gotta, I have to make sure that this is done, I have to do this thing. Mm -hmm. We say that we're busy but if you really step back and look at the situation you start going well really all it uh, meant is i was there i didn't mm -hmm. actually do anything I, I took my my son had to go to soccer practice mm -hmm. like, well how long were you there it was a two-hour practice mm -hmm. well what did you do when you were there mm -hmm. i scrolled facebook and i mm -hmm. was just watching i was going watching yeah. some videos and yeah. I, I didn't i didn't really do that i was Pretty talking much. on the phone to my friend and yeah. like wait a second that's two hours that you could have done something for yourself yeah I you get it done your mile. There was a there was a damn track around the soccer field your kids mm -hmm. playing on. Like you can just do your mile right now. Oh, like, we're too tired. Oh yeah, I was sleepy. 
We're too tired. We're too we're too exhausted to do something that's gonna make us happy in the end. But uh, when you actually start doing it, you start feeling better. It's that snowball effect of not doing nothing at all. You get used to it, yeah. you know. And if you're telling yourself you're too tired, your body's gonna believe exactly you believe what you're saying. It. You believe it. Yeah. And I think that's the thing that we're working on so hard with just a mile a day, with you have any excuses, and with the mind, mindset training is it's not about having to dedicate three, four hours a day. Right. Sometimes just 20 minutes. Yep. Sometimes 10 minutes. Yep. Like, it adds up. At the end of the week, you put another hour towards what it is mm -hmm. that you're trying to do to be successful versus zero minutes. Yep. You know, and it adds up. It adds up. If you're just There's a book about that called The Type Z Guides to Success. There's Success. A, there's a lot of books on this. And <laughs> they, they talk about how to be successful for lazy people in the book. And it's exactly what you're saying. It's like you can sit there and not do two and ten minutes a day every day for the next three years, mm -hmm. and that book will never get written. Right. But you can literally spend ten to fifteen minutes a day every other day. And you might have a creative burst where you do want to spend an hour, but that ten minutes here and there will eventually add up. And that's yeah. just with just a mile a day. Let's say let's well. say if you have a dream to write something or if you have a dream to create something, if you put in like you said, 10 minutes a day. You'd write two pages. Just just spill out what's on your mind on the topic. And you do have those days, because I know when I was writing too, I would have bursts that I would just be filling pages with stuff. Mm -hmm. And so you'll have big moments, but just focus on just a 10 minute thing. Yeah. Or if I'm trying to read this book, or I'm trying to uh, work on this project and it's just a side thing or, or a hobby that I'm doing. If you're putting in just a couple minutes a day, yeah. and you do two pages a day, just as an example, and just say writing, I'm just giving you an example. Um, two, two pages a day, you got 14 pages a week. I mean, we're putting in almost 60 to 70 pages a month. Mm -hmm. And that means within three, four, five months, now you've got hundreds of pages that you can work on and edit through. Mm -hmm. And like within a year, you have your book completely edited and fixed up and ready to launch because it took you six, seven months of just mm -hmm. 10 minutes a day. Yeah. 10 minutes a day. It's just the only thing that makes you truly fail yeah. is not doing it. Yeah, so the it's philosophy for me is a little something every day is better than nothing at all every single day. And when I started developing a routine that I live by, you know, uh, part of it is the uh, first thing I do when I wake up in the morning, I say the serenity prayer every single day, I journal or I switch it up and sometimes I meditate, I do an uh, emotional work uh, meditation and then I do a, a vision meditation, it's called a six phase meditation and it's free by Vision Lukiani and it has you do, it, he has you do like a step by step uh, meditation through your day, how you want it to go, the things that you want to do and how do you want life to turn out, you know, three years from now and uh, so he helps you to, I guess, visualize each step that you would be taking moment by moment. And uh, using gratitude is a main part of that situation so you can be able to recognize great things when they happen. And um, so after that, after the meditation, straight to training. You know, I train uh, uh, about one hour, 45 minutes to an hour, but that's just me because I know what I'm training for specifically. So I do, I do my training and then I get up, I'm cooking my food for my children and then I'm homeschooling. So when you say uh, there's no room for excuses, is I understand it. I'm like, I have a nine to five job, I work eight hours a day, uh, five days a week, I homeschool my kids, I'm with my kids 24 seven and I'm training and I'm working on myself at the same time. But, you but also, I've eliminated. You also have coaching clients and you have yeah. people that you're working with through music stuff also. Absolutely. And he still has videos and still has music that he's creating too. If you haven't seen any of his stuff, it's so good. Instagram superset dot ten. It's really good. He's extremely talented. And it's not even me just blowing smoke because we're friends. Like you're extremely talented and it's so good. Appreciate it. And so I challenge any of you guys no, just check it out. Man. Check it out. See what it is. And I think you'll be very impressed. And I think that you'll see like this. I can see why you were one of the people who made it as high as you did in the industry. It makes perfect sense. Mm -hmm. And so there's so much that we've covered. We've covered a lot. And I think that there's so much even too to keep on wrapping like the whole point of not doing anything. Like we, we do hurt the most and we do feel the most lost when we're not making progress. And I've seen people doing negative progress 
who still feel better because they're moving in a direction but not yeah. making the choice causes us the most stress. Mm -hmm. And that's something to think about. If you've been through a loss and you've been through pain and you've been through hurt and you've been through the things that would stop you or slow you down or break you down and you just sit in it. You don't move forward, you don't move in any direction, you just sit there in indecision about what you should be doing. It's the most stress that we have. And I think any of us can attest to mm -hmm. when you made a decision to do something that you knew was difficult to do afterwards, it was like a huge weight was lifted off your chest. Mm -hmm. Once you make a choice, it makes you feel liberated or free. Even if it's a bad choice, at least you made a choice and it takes the weight off. And that's when we feel our best. And that's what we're designed for is to make those decisions. You know, if you're very religious, God gave you free will for a purpose. You have to make decisions with mm -hmm. it. There is something you're supposed to be doing. Mm -hmm. And, and you can't let the fear stop you. You can. You can let the fear stop you. Mm -hmm. That is one of the choices. You can literally do nothing. Yeah. That is one of the choices. You're the only one who has to live with the regret of that. You're the one. Nobody else honestly cares. They have their own stuff. Yeah. Everyone's got their own thing they're working through too. So no one's going to be calling you every single day to make sure that you're doing a good job for you today. You can live in fear. You can do nothing. And at first people will try until they realize you're not. That's a choice. It's like, yeah, but so I feel like it's a pretty good place to stop. That's a pretty good place. That's a good, that's a good place to stop, I feel. Yeah cover a lot today. How do you feel? We did, man. You gotta let what we did uh, record marinate. It's a lot of information. It's a lot. We and a lot of this lot. information and everything that we talked about, we practice daily. And that's why I feel uh, I can talk about it. I know that's why Rick can talk about it because we're friends. I know his routine. I know how he gets down with everything. And when I'm slacking, he'll be right there in my face to tell me. <laughs> I'm like, come do it with me. Bro, <laughs> what did you do today? You don't, you're not look, you don't have that vibe that you had today when you did everything you were supposed to do. Mm -hmm. So you need friends like that. And uh, with Just a Mile a Day and Rick, they helped me uh, a lot, you know, to uh, come out of the shell that I was in. And they, uh, Rick could tell that I was in a shell. You know, that vibe was just coming off of me like... Uh, who is this dude? We talked, you know, we had a conversation, we spoke, we knew the history, and sometimes you need something like a mentor, which Rick has been to me, to say, hey, I'm gonna let me pull you out of the trenches, you know, let me get you out of this hole. Just a little bit, you gotta pull yourself out of it, but you have to have these type of people around you to help you realize who you are, you know, and it did help me uh, to realize what I was sacrificing by either doing or not doing, you know? And you have to be somebody, you have to have somebody with you up front in your face to confront you about certain things. And when people confront you, you have a, a choice to look at it a certain way. You can be defensive about it and put up your guards, or you can really listen to what that person is saying, especially when you recognize they truly care. So don't push away people who truly care about you. Really well said. Thug life. Thug life. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate you so much. Real. Thank you so much for being a part of this. And I think a lot of you who have worked with me know that I'm one of those few guys who really does put it all into you. And I think a lot of you have had those one-on-one -on -one conversations and uh, know what it's like to be able to have me challenge you. Um, we did that personality test that I sent out to the Mindset Group. I am a number one challenger. I challenge everybody to see it differently. I challenge you because Everyone is better than they were told they are, and I challenge people to see it differently so you can believe in yourself again. And at the end of it, all the loss and all the change and all the things that we go through still come down to a choice and how we're going to handle it. Do you see opportunity? Do you blame others? Do you take accountability? Do you choose to step up or do you choose to just be the loss? Do you choose to just be that thing now? Everything's a choice. So cheers to all of you guys. We're out of water. But cheers to you. Thank you guys for being on here. Well, thank you so much for being on here. Sure. And for all of you, I don't know, hey, do you know our catchphrase? No. You don't know the catchphrase? No. All right. For, I'll have some of you guys even type it up. So we, just a mile a day, our big thing we say, 
is get off the GM couch. Yeah, get off the GM couch. And then you say, or Andrea says almost always, I wish he was on. I wish you guys weren't at the gala. Do the jam thing. Do the jam thing. Get you off ready? the jam couch and do the jam thing. You got it. You ready? Okay. Yeah. You ready? Yeah. All right. There we go. So, th so those of you, cheers to you. Thank you for joining us on this very special Wine Wednesday. Yep. Um, I look forward to being able to hear from Denise and Andrea later on. But uh, I'm very, very thankful for Will being here. This was a lot of very good thank information. You for so you for strong. And thank you guys all for being a part of it. And if you watch this on Thursday, thank you for spending the hour with us because it means a lot that you would take the hour out of your day to be able to absorb this information. I hope something great came from it. Mm -hmm. So for those of you who are wondering, what do I do next? How do I get started? Should I get my mile going? Should I do the workout? Should I be doing the mindset stuff? You know what you should be doing? Something. Mm -hmm. Get off the gym couch. And do the jam thing. Oh! Oh! <laughs> Got it. Thank you guys. <laughs> we'll see you guys later. Dope. Yeah. <laughs>